Thanks so much for, for doing such a fantastic job. I still get compliments about uh, about that. And I, th I think I should be directing your fans to, to your website. <laughs> <laughs> when I arrived on the shores of Dubai many moons ago, searching for hidden bullion, I remember meeting a chirpy Australian lawyer at a business networking event. He was a five-year PQE University of Sydney-educated solicitor, and he, like me, had just moved to the city. We got chatting about our experiences. When he spurted something about Gara, the Sharia principle of uncertainty that has the capacity to vitiate a contract, I was impressed. The boy had done his homework. Actually, I'm quite at sea, mate, he said looking into the distance after I had expressed appreciation of his knowledge of an age-old Islamic legal principle. The statement sounded like a confession. But I knew what he meant. Entrepreneurs and lawyers from common law jurisdictions such as America, England, Pakistan, India, New Zealand and Australia can often feel rudderless when thrust into the complex civil law systems in the Middle East. Kamal Jabbar, it's great to finally meet you after working with you on this fabulous audio, but it's a fa fabulous book, and, and thank you for choosing me as the, the narrator to turn it into an audio book. Whereabouts are you now? Uh, I'm in Dubai. Um, usually it's very hot, but, uh, you know, in the last few days we've had uh, tremendous amounts of rain, so uh, a lot like uh, probably what the UK is uh, has been uh, of late. Is it uh, is it fairly cold where you are? It has been chilly. It's a bit milder today. I'd say uh, we're going to get somewhere. Maybe we might get into double figures in Celsius today, it, ah. but which is quite warm for January in the UK. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I don't think we're talking about UAE temperatures. I just yeah. I can't. <laughs> Can't see that happen. <laughs> you and, you and have been here, haven't you? Uh, to to the UAE? Uh, no, I've been to. Uh, oh, I, I've changed planes in Dubai. Right. I have changed planes on a flight to New Zealand. I uh -huh. I changed planes in Dubai. That's that's uh, the closest right. I got. So, where mm -hmm. are you originally from? Where did you grow up? Uh, grew up in Karachi, uh, which is the su southernmost city in Pakistan. Uh, and then uh, I went to university in London, um, was called to the bar from Lincoln's Inn um, and went, lived in Karachi again uh, in Toronto for a little while. And then I've been based in Dubai for the last uh, 10 years. So it's more or less become home. Um, and what were you doing before you, you went to Dubai? Were you always in the same kind of business? Uh, yeah, I've always been a lawyer. Um, I, I've always, uh, I, I practiced as a barrister initially, then I went in-house um, and worked with a financial institution uh, in, in Pakistan and then uh, and then in Dubai um, before going into back into private practice. So um, I advise uh, small to medium-sized uh, companies, a lot of startups. Uh, I help them uh, launched their businesses uh, to expand within the UAE and within the region. Uh, Dubai is uh, a, a kind of a hub in the Middle East because um, it's got a very uh, robust uh, ecosystem um, and uh, it's, it's purpose built for business. So you see a lot of um, entrepreneurs from all around the world uh, wanting to uh, set up um, in Dubai and use it as a base. Um, so that's what I do, uh, and that's uh, you know how I spend my time. So I'm guessing then, going from Pakistan to Toronto, you would then mm -hmm. have to there'd be a difference in the way that the the law is is interpreted uh, legally, and then going to Dubai, you got to learn all over again. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, Canada, um, given the fact that I've, uh, I'm trained um, in England, um, Canada is, is, is you know, is, is, is a system that you can understand um, because it's common law based, like the US, like Australia, New Zealand. Um, it's UAE where you have uh, a bit of a challenge for common law lawyers from England and elsewhere. Because the UAE is uh, essentially civil law based, which means that 
um, the, the concept of precedent uh, is, 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 is not there. Um, uh, all the proceedings in the local courts are in Arabic um, uh, and judgments are not uh, published uh, routinely. And to make matters even more complicated, there is also a common law system within uh, one of its 50 uh, free zones. So you've got, you've got the mainland where you've got your regular law, and then you've got 50 free zones which have the rights to make their own rules. So um, Canada was not that difficult to kind of get a grasp of. <laughs> it was uh, Dubai which was challenging uh, to start off with. And I think that's what inspired uh, me to write this book because um, it's a kind of a guidebook to people coming in uh, to, this, to, to the UAE and to give them a glimpse uh, of what the system's about. Well, as you can see from the title of the book above, if you're watching on YouTube, it's UAE Business Essentials, Practical Legal Protections for Individuals, Entrepreneurs and SMEs. So what are some of the biggest mistakes or maybe misconceptions that get you know, entrepreneurs and business people into trouble in the UAE? Um, well, I think that, you know, a, a lot of the times, um, unless there's complete clarity uh, on it, and this is where getting good advice uh, at the very outset is important. Um, it's, it's, it, it, you have to be clear about what kind of laws uh, you want applicable and where you want to set up business. Um, like I said, there are 50 free zones. Um, and each of them can have their own rules. Some of them actually do even have their own courts. Um, one of them, which is the Abu Dhabi Global Markets, uh, by its regulations has the common law of England and Wales directly uh, applicable to all companies and to all matters within that free zone. So it's very interesting. Uh, you know, you've got uh, common law being made um, in the courts of London and it being applicable within uh, this free zone in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so, you know, you've got uh, to answer your question um, to when entrepreneurs are starting out, it's it, the first challenge that they face is where should they go and what laws do they want applied to the contracts that they get into. And um, so, uh, given that there's a choice, it's, it's an important decision to make. Mm -hmm. And your book is great at explaining because I don't have a legal mind, but your mm. book was really, really good at taking you through some of those differences with the free zones and, and the, the differences between uh, the common law and civil law and, and the way it all works. And you just, I would say you gently take the reader or the listener uh, in the case of the audio book through everything. But along the way, this may surprise you, I think the book's quite entertaining as well because it's really it's a really interesting subject. And you had a story in the book about a couple of people who had an informal chat. They had a, yes. an informal chat about a business idea. And then when yeah. one of the pe people started the business, the person they were just chatting to, and as far as they were concerned, it was an informal chat, well, they decided they were a partner in them. Could you just just take us through that yeah. and how this misunderstanding happened, just yeah. as an example yeah. of, of yeah. what yeah. can happen yeah. if you just, don't know what you're doing? Absolutely. And just on your point of, uh, of, of me trying to make it entertaining, it's basically because no one uh, wants to read a treatise on law, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. unless you're a lawyer. So, um, so, so, so I've tried to pepper it with anecdotes and stories from you know, practice in Dubai for the last 10 years. And some of them are very interesting um, because, you know, you meet people and you meet, uh, you see all kinds of situations. Um, so, yeah, so that um, that story that I've given was basically about um, uh, two people having gone out and uh, an entrepreneur wanting to discuss a business idea that, that, uh, that he has with a friend and um, to get her insights into it because she's, um, you know, smart. Uh, woman and she's been part of the industry and they over a, over dinner and drinks they discuss that issue but they have no hours. business relationship so it's not a business they have meeting no, business. no it's not a business meeting but but um, and then they go their own separate ways he goes and uh, sets up a company uh, and within uh, works hard at it uh, and finally launches it six months after this meeting 
and she uh, reads about it and gives him a call, congratulates him and says, oh, uh, and, you know, um, many congrats. Now I'd, uh, I've been made redundant uh, from my position uh, and I'd like to assert my 50% equity stake in the company that we discussed six months ago. He obviously does, uh, you know, backflips, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> thinking, uh, you, know, you know, what the hell is this about? But I mean, I just try to kind of use that as an, even though it may seem preposterous or absurd, it's not actually that preposterous or absurd. Um, because uh, these, unless you're careful, you can run into issues like this because there were no, uh, even though it, was the, uh, the, it wasn't a formal meeting, business ideas were discussed. Input was uh, given and exchanged. And that input could have been acted upon by him. And that could have been the inspiration to launch a product, which potentially could be worth millions of dollars. So, um, and when a business is launching, uh, just even the threat of litigation is enough to turn off potential investors. No one wants to, everybody, I mean, investors in any case are so wary about investing in startups because they're so prone to failure and risk. If there is a great startup with a great product, and suddenly an investor finds out that it's mired in litigation. It's a huge turnoff. So uh, in that example, she uses the threat or alludes to the threat of filing a case to drive her point home about the 50% equity stake. At a time when he's most vulnerable because he's a startup yeah. and he's looking for investors as well. Exactly. So with doing business in the UAE, UAE from a, a legal perspective being, I don't want to use the word challenging because obviously with, with experts like you around, there is there are ways through it. Why should people want to set up a business specifically in the UAE? Um, what, uh, one of the main, uh, main reasons is that it's a uh, tax-free jurisdiction. Um, right. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, you've got long-term... Um, I mean, 90% of the UAE population is made up of immigrants. And that is an astounding figure. Yeah. Uh, it's got the highest concentration per capita of immigrants uh, on the planet. So, um, yeah, nine out of 10 people are from different parts of the world. So people come here, obviously, because of the quality of life, um, the fact that it's a tax-free jurisdiction, uh, the fact that um, it's clean, there's virtually no crime, um, there are incentives to invest here because it's easy to repatriate your profits back to your home country. Um, and there's a very, the, the, you know, there's a world-class um, ecosystem. Um, you've got fantastic transport uh, facilities. Um, you've got uh, free zones which cater to, which literally you have to just go and, and within a matter of days, you can have a company up and running, get office space, uh, it's very functional that way uh, as a place to uh, do business and also to live. Um, and we were talking uh, earlier about you having uh, transited through Dubai. Uh, Dubai is also the busiest airport in the world. Um, so Dubai gets about 10 million tourists um, a year. So there's a lot happening. So it's a good place for uh, the, the people look at when considering um, incorporating their businesses. And how long did it take you to write the book? You know, I uh, it didn't actually, I, I mean, it took me from um, uh, first uh, thinking about it to finishing the editing and all that about three and a half months. Okay. So I was, you know, Not I was bad. Trying. You must... Yeah, yeah, pretty good going. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not a very lengthy book, but uh, yeah. Just There's a lot to in it, of, though. Uh, there, there is a lot <laughs> in it. Yeah. And had you, had you, have you published books before? I have. They've been works of fiction, which, um, you know, uh, antidotes to insomnia. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, but I, I, so some uh, poetry, some. Um, short fiction but this was this was my first non-fiction book um, right yeah and and after a while i have written for newspapers and uh, and journals and magazines um, yeah and have well. you had any of them turned into an audiobook before 
No, no, this was the first one, and and thanks so much for for doing such a fantastic job. I still get compliments about uh, about that, and I th I think I should be directing your fans to to your website. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, well, thank you so much. I mean, the book, the book really was, like I say, it was a real joy to do because it wasn't. I mean, I, I looked at it first off, and I thought, okay, well, this is going to be a, a book. It's it's about it's it's about legal stuff, and it, there's probably a lot of Latin in here or something. And and it wasn't that at all. It was a really um, it, because it, because as you said, there's there's some stories in there, and it's slightly autobiographical as as well. I think a lot of you comes through. The book a lot of your mm. personality i think comes through mm -hmm. but it's a very professional book uh, at the same time i don't want people to think that it's a very flippant book about doing business in the uae it's got yeah. the goods in there it's uh, i think you've got the Thank balance you. just right and it was it was a really nice book to do actually i really uh, i really enjoyed doing that one so thanks for choosing me um if Thank you'd you. like to get a, a free one uh, if you if you go into the if you're watching this on YouTube and you go into the blurb, there's a link there to Audible where you can get a, a free trial for 30 days of Audible and you can basically get the book for free. So if you'd like to check that out, there's a link there if, if you check it out. And so so what would you say is the 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 main thing that somebody Thanks. needs to know? Sorry, sorry what were you going to say, Kamal? Uh, no, no, no. I was just going to follow on and say that uh, and, and they can get a free section of my book uh, of, from my website, which is kamaljabar.com. Okay, and I'll put that in the link as well. kamaljabar.com, uh, put that in there. And uh, yeah, you'll get a section of the book for free. So so check that out. Well, what do you think is, is the, if, I mean, there's a lot in the book, but if there's just one thing that you could say to a business person or an entrepreneur who's thinking about or has just started doing business in the UAE, what they should mm. make sure that they get right first, the most important thing. I think, well, uh, you know, for, for, for startups, um, I think it would be making sure that their intellectual property is properly secured uh, because the intellectual property, which is for, you know, for a tech company, it could be the code that has been written. Um, yeah. So, and, and without that intellectual property being secured, um, uh, startups run a huge risk of uh, you know uh, of losing out um, i've given examples um, uh, in, in in my book as well where uh, a startup uh, it was a startup then which is called uh, snapchat um, now they, they, they that's the app that's uh, made the disappearing photo uh, very famous yeah. um, so, so so there's this uh, Coder, an employee of theirs who came up with the idea of the disappearing photo. You could send a picture of yourself to someone and it would only flash on their screens for a few seconds and then disappear. And um, this is what Snapchat was this, their big thing. And they, they launched it. And um, this was an employee who, uh, who worked for Snapchat. But the mistake they'd made was they hadn't put an adequate provision in his employment contract saying that anything that he produces is automatically deemed to be uh, the property of Snapchat and not himself. So they had to... Well, whereas, say, for instance, in, in the UK, it, if you're a paid employee and not a partner yeah. or a contractor, if you're a paid employee, then it's, it's mm. automatic that the, the company owns anything you create. And that's not no, the case it, in the UA? No, 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 no. Even even in the, even in the UK, um, you will see in employment contracts there'll be some a provision similar to a work for hire provision that anything Graham creates while on the job, nine to five, in between nine to five, is owned by the company who employs Graham. Right. You'll have that in the UK as well. This is an American case which I'm talking about, and uh, yeah, they, they have to pay 157 million dollars to settle out of court uh, with this employee because he said, you know, there's no such provision in my contract. Um, I made this and you've made this product, which is potentially worth hundreds of millions. So uh, they had to settle with him. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> well, that's, wow. Uh, that's, so if you get it wrong, you can get it very, very wrong. That's why you, you need you the book. You can get it very wrong. <laughs> that's why you need Kamal's book. 
UAE Business Essentials, Practical Legal Protections for Individuals, Entrepreneurs and SMEs. It's an interesting book. It's an important book. And it's an entertaining book too. And get the either the Kindle version or download that or check out the audiobook version, which uh, I was chosen to narrate and enjoyed narrating it very much. What is next for Kamal Jabbar? Uh, I'm working on it um, there and I'm, I'm, I'm toying with a few ideas for uh, the next book. Um, so hopefully uh, I'll be knocking on your on your walls very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Kamal Jabbar, the book is UAE Business Essentials, Practical Legal Protections for Individuals, Entrepreneurs and SMEs. Check out the links in the blurb if you're watching on YouTube, but if you're watching like an embedded version of this somewhere else, check it out on YouTube and you'll get all that information there. It's, it's all in the blurb. Thank you very much and continued success. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.